<laughs> this is like a slumber party. <laughs> slumber party. <laughs> yeah. Should I clap to get everything in sync? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> One person is. That's nice. Hey guys, sampai ketemu lagi di eh, bertemu lagi kita di channel gue. Tapi kali ini this time I have a guest star Shen. Hey man, hey man. So for you guys who don't know Shen, probably because you are not a magician. Okay, Shen, introduce yourself. Hello, my name is Shen Lim. I am a close-up magician. I've been doing magic for about 10 years, um, and yeah, I've been traveling around the world. Right now, I'm in Macau performing at House of Magic. It's my last week here. Um, and told them that you are a FISM winner. Oh, I'm also a FISM <laughs> winner. I'm FISM 2015 World Champion of Card Magic. Um, I placed first in that category, and it brought me all over the, around the world, really. Mm -hmm. and that, that gave me so many opportunities to, um, to perform at different conventions and different uh, theaters. And uh, my next place is going to be in New Zealand, so I'm really excited, yeah. He's a very famous and busy magician, <laughs> yeah? <laughs> Jadi, uh, so, Buat kan uh, banyak pusulat di Indonesia, pengen tahu kan uh, kita banyak banget ada competition, magic competition di Indonesia dan mungkin ada yang pengen tahu juga karena Shen uh, kebetulan dia winning FISM 2015, right? 2015, yeah. FISM and first, first winner, right? First place. Yeah, first, first place and could you just, just share it to magician in Indonesia mm -hmm. yeah. about the experience, first the experience yeah. first yeah, very terrifying. <laughs> terrifying? Yeah, the yeah, most because, scariest experience of because, my life. Uh, most of magicians like me and uh, magicians in Indonesia probably doesn't have, doesn't get the chance okay. to be in the vision. Yeah, so uh, you terrifying. Uh, you're, yeah, <laughs> if you don't want to be scared, then it's <laughs> fine. Because it, it really is the most terrifying event. Imagine seeing the f eight judges are in front of you. And they are magicians, right? And, well, Lu Chen, Joshua J. Oh. Uh, very famous magicians. So imagine your idol that you've always looked up to sitting right in front of you with a piece of paper judging you. That's the first thing. Uh. <laughs> and then second thing, there's 4,000 really good magicians watching you in the stadium, the stage, the big stage. And, it, you know, it's, it's a terrifying, terrifying feeling because they all know the exactly method, yeah. what you're doing and they're all judging on how well you execute it. So my hands were shaking. My hands usually don't shake. Even I did my whole mental preparation, everything. My hands still, my <laughs> yeah. hands still shake, and uh, yeah, it, it was so it was so hard. And um, you know, for me, I, I think you know a lot of practice, having real world practice, definitely helped with that. But um, but yeah, it it was a scary experience. But um, at the end, it was really satisfying. Of course, you know when I placed, I, I didn't even I didn't even know I was going to win. I, it was such a uh, all the competitors there were really really truly amazing. So. Um, you know, anyone who competes in FISM, you know, it takes a lot of guts, but, uh, but yeah, it's, it's really good. <laughs> is it your, when, when first time you learn magic, is it, uh, are, are you planning to go to FISM like no. in the first place or not like, okay, <laughs> yeah. I want to do magic because I want to go to FISM, I want to be the first no. or? Well, when I first started magic, it was to, 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 to pick up women. <laughs> like, I want to, I want to, because I never had a girlfriend. I think that's everyone's problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was most kids. guys' problem is they didn't have a girlfriend. Yeah, I want a girlfriend. So I tried to learn magic and it didn't really work out so well. So it became more of a, an obsession after that. Mm -hmm. You know, then when you are obsessed with something, you kind of care about it. Yeah. And so when you care about something, uh, it becomes, you treat it like an art form. So yes. I ended up treating it like an art form. And then I found out about FISM. I was like, oh my gosh, it's like a, almost like a, a competition, almost like America's Got Talent, but yeah. just, just for yeah, magic, yeah. right? And I thought that was so cool. You know, I thought that was the coolest thing. Um, and I had actually won the IBM competition mm -hmm. in my third year of doing magic. And so that kind of got me interested because you get some money, you yeah. get a little bit of fame. And I was like, oh, wow, you know, people are like, oh, your, your act's really cool. And you get recognition from magicians. And so FISM is the, FISM is the biggest, the biggest yeah. magic competition. There's nothing bigger than that. And so uh, in my eyes, I was like, oh, wow. So I got this from IBM, which is, you know, IBM is a big competition is uh, for America. Mm. Um, but you know, after you win that, you want to keep going higher. And yeah, so you, you said, aim for the, you aim for the highest. Yes. And then I, I saw FISM was, you know, International Olympics of Magic. It's con considered the Olympics. And so that's what I was aiming for. And, and, and I really wanted to try that out. Yeah. yeah. And then, so <coughs> what happened is in Indonesia, in my country, it's like there's a lot of competition, magic competition, but mm. the judges, well, for my opinion, the judges is not eligible for as a judges because yeah. Yeah. they had, some of them are not experienced in performing 
but they don't have like real, really world, real, real world, world yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and then, um, the the contestant mostly. What I, I'm not saying like every every magician mm-hmm. in Indonesia, but probably like fifty percent of the contestant are copying someone else. I see. So Interesting. it's it's for me it's kind of shame mm. because what I saw in FISM, like what you did, you did like totally original, a new yeah. routine. Yeah. And h- how do you feel about seeing what happened in We country? see this in America too. Uh, yeah, yeah it, believe it or not, in, in IBM, I mean, there was a couple of first place winners. I'm, I won't say the name. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a guy, that in, in, he won first place uh, for stage manipulation, and he did exactly Yuho Jin's act. I'm not kidding. Seriously, exactly Yuho Jin's act, bit for I, bit. I didn't know that's happening. And like then he he country. combined Ho Jin, and then he also did Den Den. You know Den Den with the paper crane. Paper, oh, he also I won FISM as well. Uh, and so <laughs> it's like imagine majority it was 80 percent Ho Jin, and then 20 wow. percent. Uh, yeah, and and it was it was so strange to watch that and to watch him win, and I was like, did these judges? Yeah. Not see Yu Ho Jin. <laughs> Yu Ho Jin just won two years ago, and now this guy comes up and wins yeah. uh, five thousand dollars. First of all, U.S. dollars. That's a lot of money, <laughs> yeah. and wins a lot of recognition for copying completely Ho Jin's act. Yeah. And so, I think you know, the, you, we can't really do much about it. The only thing we can do is talk to the guy. I went up to the guy and I said, "Hey, dude, you, you know you're copying his act, yeah. right? You're aware of this?" And he's like, "Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll change. I'll change. Change." I don't think he, personally. I yeah. don't think he's gonna change it. Um, but that the first thing we can do is we can talk to them. But I think the second thing is um, social media is actually a great way mm-hmm. to kind of spread awareness of someone's act. Um, YouTube's a great way, of course, to share your act and then to get well known, and then that way people can see your act and then compare it to whoever created it first. Blah blah blah. Um, but it happens. Yeah, it happens in the U.S. too. Um, believe it or not. Um, and so. I feel like that's nothing we can really do much about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, so that means it's already a habit, right? Yeah. It's like yeah. some cities. So. But I guess what we can we can do is we can kind of teach. Well, here, here's what I do. So for me, every time I, I watch someone's act mm-hmm. or when I buy a DVD or a magic trick, ever since even when I first started magic, I always refuse to perform it how they performed it. Mm-hmm. I always refuse, like even Brad Christian's DVD, yeah. uh, uh, Crash Course to Magic, great DVD by the way, um, <clears throat> got me started in magic. And, but I completely ignored the majority of his teachings. All I learned was just the methods. Yeah. Oh. And, then, and then how you perform it, you just change it. Um, I, I always told myself to change it. And so that's how, that's how I have my, that's my creative well, process. Yeah. Uh, well, that's that's what I did also because yeah? Yeah, for yeah. me, if you are buying things and then you 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 did the same thing like everyone else, so what's yeah. the difference? Exactly, what makes you different? That's, that's why yeah. I, I always try, I always try to be different. I mean, not different. Uh, I'm in the in the meaning different is like I want to do it in my own way, not like mm. probably the I, guy who I taught love, it. The yeah. guy who taught it in the DVD. It's like yeah. when when Shin does do thing like incredible things. I want to do it, but in different ways. So mm. probably I can impress him because, <laughs> <laughs> okay. and I was impressed. And I was, and I was because, impressed because uh, that's that's the beauty of magic. I mean, uh, we as a performer, when we see someone else art, it's like <coughs> we have we, we got the entertainment itself for ourselves. That's right. That's so right. that's why don't we give the same thing to uh, to other magicians so mm-hmm. they can get entertained? Yeah. Because that's well, right. it's magic. Yeah. So. Do you have any like um, suggestion for them who who just starting starting just starting yeah? Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah. I think what I said, you know, just just you know, when you when you're when you next time when you, when you pick something up, just always try to visualize it, how you can change it and perform it according to your personality and your style. Never think of it as, okay, he said I have to do it this way. He says I have to put the cart at the bottom, so I'm going to do that. He's probably just teaching you that because he needs to have a routine in the DVD. Mm. But just only look at the method and try to find your own way of doing it and, and, and kind of put it into your own routine. Don't make a new routine based off of his. Yes. Yeah, just kind of take his methods put in your routine and I guarantee you you'll have a, a, new, a new routine by yourself that's that's my creative process there's no other way for me to create in my head in my mind I mean sometimes something kind of clicks but most of the time you have to kind of do something about it don't you can't just magically come up with something you know 
Yeah. Well, see, you hear it from <laughs> himself yeah. uh, as a FISM winner and things about magic in Indonesia and competition. So probably you can learn and get something from his experience. Yeah. So thank you so much, man. Thanks, man. Thanks. Thanks. And don't forget to stop by to yep. Shin channels. Shinlin Magic. Is, uh, is the name for my YouTube and Instagram. So come follow me yeah, and, and see some stuff. Instagram and we're planning to have something together if, yeah. in like superhumans.online. So yeah, and hopefully prepared. in the future. Hopefully in the future. Maybe a show together. Mm -hmm. That would be cool. Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> All right. Bye bye. Bye.